Hey peeps, welcome back to part 8 of Broken Sword 2. Um, it seems that we've just been doing the housework for a priest. Press his collar. So, we'll grab it and we'll give it to him. So that we can get to this village. Nope, wrong way. There we go. We'll give it to him. And hopefully he should help us. Here's your collar, Father. Alright, come on. Thank you, George. You'd probably think it a little odd of me to make such a fuss. Mm -hmm. Oh no. If I'd been living in the jungle for 11 years, I'd be completely screwy too. Screwy? Yes, perhaps I am. Ever since my last visit to that village. Mm -hmm. Right, come on then. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I still not finished my sermon. <clears throat> Look, Father, I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village, and it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. Go right. Well said. I must be crazy. We must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall. Well, come on then. By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants, what? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. Uh, sum it up with him. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. So, what do you want? <laughs> this is what I want. My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So, everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real <laughs> sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. Come on. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. No, there's no one of that description here. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. I thought he just made up all those stories he tells. I never thought of him as being wise. Makes me wonder, they've got, like, proper South American or Central American Indians here that speak fluent, Ameri uh, fluent American accents and speak like Americans. Bit odd. Never mind. I'd like to see the shaman, please. You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean, like a gift? That's right. The eternal question. What do you give a man who has everything? Believe it or not, give him the dog biscuits. Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. <laughs> so, is this your first visit to our planet? I am from the same planet as you. I'm from California. Why, we're practically neighbors. <laughs> that was quick. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. Well, we don't, but what we will do is you want to put the stone in the box. I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. And then you want to give it back to him. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. Yep, you do that. What do you do for entertainment here in uh, the jungle? We make documentaries. <laughs> in Tabtic, we've appeared in seven TV films and an article in National Geographic. <laughs> nice. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. 
Right. Come on. Right. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Please sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the coyote stone to this village. Really? My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. Listen, my girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tough. There's nothing sacred with these people. It <laughs> was a secret, known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There is time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Really? Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the root? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip the riddles? There we go. Many years ago, when the world was young, the great god and king Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy Tezcatlipoca took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. Ooh. A group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse, which marked the close of the fifth age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. Mm -hmm. But how did they trap Tez, the evil god? <laughs> they built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror, perfectly smooth obsidian. Luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. The eclipse which marks the ending of the fifth age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Tez Catlipoca would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. Mm -hmm. What happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Guaramonte City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle stone mm -hmm. was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote Stone reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. Aha! Uh -huh. Tell me more about the Jaguar Stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Guaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain, the man known as El Draco, sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Mm -hmm. Where is the Jaguar Stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland, across the Great Sea, to England. Mm, interesting. Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Typical pirate, then. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure, 
Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. I see. Can you show me the way to the pyramid of Tezcatlipoca? Not until you possess all three stones. Okay. Can I have the root now? Now do I get the root? Here. Take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird seems to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome. But you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. Mm -hmm. oh, no. I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party days. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger. Hey, except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. <laughs> right. Now, we can't give the root to Nico whole. We've got to press it. So we put the root on the press. Mm -hmm. And we'll put the cone underneath to catch it. The cone was ideal as a makeshift container. Then we'll press it. As the liquid was squeezed from the root, it collected in the cone. Excellent. Now pick it up and take it up to it, George. Look, Hubert, the antidote. What are you waiting for? Hmm. Nice tree house. Nico. Here, drink this. Oh, George. It's horrible. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other stones? <laughs> what other stones? What have you gotten me into now, George Stobart? <laughs> the patient is sounding more like her own self already. Nico recovered quickly from a fever. Basically, it's not telling you this now, peeps, but basically they've split up to find the other two stones. And George has gone to the Caribbean, called Ketchy's Landing, this bit, and Nico has gone to England. So, I don't know why he didn't do the audio there, but basically they've split up. Okay? And George is here. So now... Uh, if we take a look at these plans that this guy has obviously got coveted I just had to sneak a look at those plans damn right you do hey get out of there you know wherever I go I hear those words Paris Syria Ireland or Spain makes no difference <laughs> what do you think you're doing I was trying to show some interest in your project. Yeah. So don't be so rude. Well, while he's over there, have a peek in the theodolite. See what's up there. Huh. Something shiny up there. Hmm. Interesting. Well... We'll have a closer look at what's up there and investigate this guy in the next video. So, see you there, peeps.